Thanks for joining us here on Facebook Live and on uh, other branches of our presence across the web here at AccuWeather. Uh, my name is Jeff Cornish, and here is senior meteorologist uh, Dan Kutlowski. He is also our tropical expert. We're glad to have you today. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, very exciting. Uh, of course, uh, the hurricane season starts in a couple of days here, and June 1st is uh, really close. So, yeah. And we've already had our first storm already. That's true. Mother Nature doesn't always obey the true calendar, no. uh, and uh, Alberto is uh, still on the map, but right. it's uh, lost most of its tropical characters. And frankly, I, I'm, I'm, I like, some people don't, but I like an early season storm because it, and, and these early season storms usually are pretty weak, but they get people to think about getting their preparations going or getting their plan, to, what we call the hurricane plan together. And so hopefully people are thinking, wow, I got to get everything together here. That's very true. And that's the big effort here. Many of you tune in every Wednesday at one o'clock. Typically, Julia Wyden is driving the bus and uh, I'm filling in for her today, but she'll be back next week. Uh, but uh, the effort here is to just keep everybody prepared for the weather. Uh, you know, we love the weather here at AccuWeather. It's a great thing, but sometimes it can be dangerous and deadly. And even with relatively weak storms, there were a few fatalities associated with Alberto. Uh, and we can see this on radar right now as uh, the storm still has a pretty good uh, symmetrical look, although it's well removed from the Atlantic, Indiana and Illinois right now. Yeah. And again, the storm track has tracked from Alabama down here all the way northward. And you can kind of see there's a big inflow of, of uh, deep moisture yet. So potential's there for some locally heavy downpours. And again, there could be some places that could get enough rain to cause flash flooding as well. Uh, not as widespread uh, as maybe as what we had down in the uh, Florida Panhandle, but certainly there's uh, opportunity uh, in some of these areas. Now, some of these places could use a, a, an inch or two of rain, so this is not really a bad thing for some areas. Yeah, we were looking at some of the rain reports, and there were isolated areas that did see five and six inch rain totals, and even more than that in some spots. Uh, and the flash flood warnings that are in effect right now in the Birmingham area mm -hmm. are pretty serious. There have been reports of uh, people trapped in homes earlier today. Uh, but sometimes uh, it seems that every storm brings a few teachable moments, I guess, right. and weather safety nuggets that we can uh, draw from. Right. Uh, with this particular storm, what comes to your mind? Well, one of the things I think people need to realize is that each storm system has its own characteristics. No two storms are alike. So therefore, uh, again, this one was what we call a hybrid type storm system, part tropical, part non-tropical. And so people ought to realize that how we classify things as meteorologists has nothing to do with the damage or the rainfall as they see in Birmingham is. So uh, again, just because you hear subtropical does not necessarily under, under, uh, underrate the, the storm necessarily whatsoever. So a uh, subtropical storm can still cause winds of all the way up to over, you know, 70 mile an hour winds. And this one didn't, but it's causing the heavy rain. And all along, we thought this thing would be the big rain producer. And from a weather standpoint, sometimes we look at the, the heart of the storm and right. the nucleus. Uh, this one never really got what we would call a warm core. So right. from a, a weather nerd standpoint, uh, you know, we don't uh, call it a true tropical system, but uh, it is certainly still something that brings significant impacts. And you, know, you talk about uh, us sometimes over classifying things. Brings to mind Sandy, where mm -hmm. we had a change in the way warnings were issued when exactly. it lost its tropical characteristics, but the real world impact was huge in New Jersey. Exactly, and I think that's what we as meteorologists still need to communicate to the general public and also those of you who are really into the weather that when you are communicating to uh, friends and relatives to realize that again, each storm is different. And like you said, in the case of Sandy, we probably just sort of should have kept it as a tropical or as a hurricane. And I think people may have heeded warnings more, but although, although Sandy was not a very, very strong storm, I mean, it was a cat one, but still uh, there's other characteristics with it were big. Like I said, the big thing about this one with, with Alberto is it's a big rain producer in causing flooding right now. Like you said, in, Birmingham, in the Birmingham area, there'll be isolated flash flooding as it moves northward as well. So those of you uh, in the Western Ohio Valley, like in portions of Kentucky and even into Indiana, my home state, uh, again, be, be on the lookout. If you live in a, fl a flood prone area and you get a quick inch and a half of rain, you're going to have some problems. Yeah, we even had, there were fatalities in North Carolina, well removed from the center of the storm. I don't know if they'll be statistically uh, tied to this storm or not, but 
uh, you, you know, we can't debate the fact that this storm uh, with its track certainly encouraged more flow from the south across all the Carolinas and Georgia, hundreds of miles east of the storm track, extra showers and storms there. Exactly, exactly. So, uh, again, that's the one big thing, uh, Jeff, that we've seen with this is even though it's a small storm, the circulation it's created has brought an enormous amount of moisture northward. I mean, I was looking at the what we call a precipital water or the depth of moisture in Pittsburgh, it's almost near the record level of what they've ever seen in Pittsburgh. So you know that this system will still have some influence on how much rainfall occurs parts of Ohio, perhaps even in Pennsylvania over the next day or two. Yeah, really juicy out there. So the uh, precipitable water for Birmingham still around 1.91 inches. Yeah. That's a lot of moisture if you were to bring everything over your head down. That'd be two inches of rain falling right away. Exactly. Now the season is uh, officially starting on June 1st and uh, you are the man with the official AccuWeather hurricane <laughs> forecast. Uh, you have a team that you work with as well. Right. Uh, but uh, what do you expect this year? Well, again, we're expecting uh, a, a season that will probably not be quite as active as last year, about uh, uh, 12 to 15 uh, storms as we have right here, six to eight hurricanes. And of those six to eight hurricanes, three to five major hurricanes and landfalls, we're like basing the landfalls basically on the uh, just looking at the pattern and also looking at past years that look very similar to the pattern we're in right now and what we expect to happen as we go into, especially August, September, and October. So again, three to four impacts. But don't focus on the actual numbers. All it takes is just one storm to uh, hit you, uh, and you can get catastrophic damage over a small area or, or, or a collective area. And again, we're most concerned about major cities being impacted uh, as well as all coastal areas. But that's the reason why everyone should have a hurricane plan uh, already in place. Uh, if you don't have one in place, you should certainly uh, have one in place. Uh, again, basically, it's, it's being ready. Uh, know where you're supposed to evacuate uh, and have provisions ready to go uh, if necessary. So, And again, those provisions uh, nowadays, uh, I mean, technology and, and uh, uh, clever people have put together uh, food that you can package and keep for several months now. So, uh, so that some of these prepackaged uh, pieces of food and water uh, are something. What a lot of people do is they buy the provisions, and then after a couple of weeks, they start eating the provisions and replace <laughs> them. Okay. So if you if you do that, it's fine. But yeah. remember to replace the provisions. You know, you don't go to the grocery store. Oh, we'll dig into our bag of of hurricane pre preparations, and next thing you know, that's gone. So if you do that again, you want to replace those as well. Yeah. Right? Maybe once a decade. The Y2K stuff can go away at exactly. this point, but it's always good to be prepared and uh, plenty of fresh water because the plumbing system gets, effect uh, gets affected oh, yeah. by all this in, in major ways. When it comes to the, the threats that tropical systems bring, mm -hmm. uh, is there one that comes to your mind as the most deadly? Um, I think, again, uh, anything with dealing with water. Storm surge obviously causes a big pileup of water, but the combination of storm surge and heavy rain is, uh, you know, very heavy rain because the heavy rain can precede the storm by a day or two. So if you end up getting, you know, something like, uh, you know, four or five inches of rain and, and your area can only put up with about two or three inches of rain, you've already got flooding. Then you bring storm surge on top of that. And if it's a big storm and your storm surge is over 10 feet, you've got a huge water problem. So again, anyone living along the coast, your main concern is going to be with water. And then even inland areas, we think about uh, recently we had Tropical Storm Lee, big problems in the Susquehanna right. Valley, Agnes back in uh, 72 or so. Um, mm -hmm. You know, sometimes these inland areas can have huge threats as well with the inland tropical rains. Exactly. Now, getting back to the forecast, again, there's two things that we're looking at for the forecast this season. One is the state of ENSO. Basically, that's whether we have an El Nino or a, uh, a La Nina or maybe a neutral. And this it looks like uh, the whole pattern is, is, going, is either going or has gone neutral, depending on what uh, piece of information you look at. But it looks like the, the trend is there. Now, the question is, will we stay neutral not only through the next few months, but will we do that all the way through uh, the hurricane season? I always tell people, keep in mind that most 85% of, of all hurricanes and tropical storms occur during August, September, and October, approximately 85%. And uh, those are the years, those are the months also where we have the greatest potential being hit by major hurricanes, which of course cause the most, most uh, death and destruction like we saw last year. Um, so, We've got that looking at us, <clears throat> and again, we're, th we're thinking that basically we're going to stay in a neutral pattern at least through uh, probably August into September, and then there are some climate models that suggest we might ease into an El Nino. We don't know that at this point, and that's 
where when we update the forecasts, especially in July and August, especially August 1st, we should have a really good idea uh, of, 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 of how those conditions are. The other element in making up a forecast is sea surface temperature. That's huge, uh, huge factor. Right now, sea surface temperatures in the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean are pretty close to what they should be for this time of the year. Not, not, and some are actually a little bit warmer than normal. The water temperatures up across uh, just to the west of where Alberto came in are actually above normal. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that that's going to cause a hurricane or tropical storm to develop. That just means that if there's a storm, it's going to, and it passes over that warm water, there's going to be more opportunity for that system to like really, uh, you know, wrap up and so forth. Now, uh, water temperatures where we see most storms developing during uh, August, September, and October, like from the Caribbean, Eastern Caribbean on eastward, those water temperatures are actually cooler than normal right now. Yeah. In fact, when we compare this year to last year, it's remarkably cooler. So the question is, will those water temperatures warm up? Now, last year they were also cool in places and they warmed up. And typically that happens. You know, the sun angles over top of you more, more directly and water warms up. I mean, if anyone's gone to the beach uh, in, uh, uh, in June versus August, they know that the water gets warmer as you go through just simply because the sun is beating down on, yeah, on the there's water. There's a cumulative effect Exactly. That. But there's another factor that, that causes water temperature uh, to go up and down and is, is the trades across the Atlantic. Uh, so far this season, the trades have been above normal across the Atlantic all the way into like Puerto Rico, Virgin Islands, all the way down through the Leeward Islands. And that's why water temperatures are running lower, lower because when you force that wind across the ocean, Keeps it, it churning. It, it blows uh, water, and then cooler water comes up from the bottom. We call that upwelling. Yeah. And so if the winds stay up, water temperatures will stay cool. So that's the key right there. If those trades stay higher, they don't usually stay higher by August, but if they stay high through like this, uh, through upcoming June and into July, then that will keep that water cooler than normal, and it just takes the atm or takes the ocean much more time to warm up. Then, so if that water is cool. We'll have even less storms than what we think right now. But we're thinking 12 to 15. We think that there there will be about an average uh, year. But but again, we may see a little bit more depending on water temperatures. Okay, and a lot of that uh, ocean water temperature conversation out uh, again, as Dan mentioned earlier, out over the open water of the the Central Atlantic and out beyond the Leeward Islands. That's what we're talking about. Usually, the late summer, early fall, uh, mm -hmm. late July, August, September storms. So the early season activity might be more influenced by some of the Gulf temperatures uh, at this point. And that's what we saw even early this season. Exactly. Well, first of all, we got to get a storm to develop. And a lot of yeah. them develop down here, east, east of the Yucatan, and like in the Western Caribbean. That's where a very favorite area is. Why? Because we have a lot of flow of air across that area. And the Yucatan creates a natural turning process is down there. We, we sometimes refer to those as gyres. Yeah. You know, it's basically just a, 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 a counterclockwise uh, turning uh, flow of air that, that, that creates, uh, goes down through there. And we always look for those and we don't see anything like that. And in fact, <laughs> I got a lot of people who ask, okay, what's, okay, Alberto's gone now. Are we going to be seeing another storm pretty soon? Well, the answer is computer models are not showing anything out there for at least the next week or so. Uh, but we're always looking for little features that might try to spin up, uh, you know, and it's more difficult to see those features spinning up down through here. But it's interesting with Alberto. Alberto showed up in the computer models two weeks ago. It was very well you know, forecast. It was well forecast. About, now, they didn't have where Alberto was going to go. They didn't have how strong Alberto was going to be, but it showed something there, you yeah. know, and that's very, it's, we, saw, we saw that last year and the year before last, that the computer models are getting so better, so good now that there's at least giving us heads up that, hey, something's going to happen in this general area. But right now, we don't see a thing for at least the next week or so. Yeah, it's incredible we can do this now. People give us a hard time sometimes in the weather business. They do. You know, we're occasionally incorrect, or at least other forecast well, agents or something. But compared to decades ago, it's incredible that we can see these things in advance. Exactly. And like I said, the, the exact details of the storms, it's very difficult to forecast. In fact, even before Alberto made landfall, we were still... Not sure whether it would go more toward Destin or more toward Panama City or toward uh, even Apalachicola. But again, those are things that we, th those details are still going to be very, very tough to call as the storm gets close to your area. Well, and then when the next one begins to spin up long in advance, 
Dan Kitlowski is the man who will uh, keep us on top of that. And you can always find the latest on AccuWeather.com uh, and on the AccuWeather app, AccuWeather Network uh, as well. And uh, it's always important to have that safety plan in action so you know what to do and how you can prepare your family when the next storm threatens. Thanks for joining us.